Hi, I'm Trevor Murphy, and we're going to talk about a 1914 E. Howard and Company clock tower clock. We'll break down the mechanism into four categories and discuss each one. Hopefully after this, we will have a better understanding of this clock. The first part is the driving mechanism. The driving mechanism supplies power to the clock. The power comes from a weight on a pulley rope that wraps around a drum connected to the clock by means of a ratchet and click. The wire rope forms one layer on the drum when it's wound up. When fully wound, it will run for eight days. Here's how you wind it. This weight has to overcome friction in the pivots, keep the pendulum going, and turn the hands on all four clock dials. If friction increases, the clock might stop, so we'll add a little weight. But too much weight adds undue stress to the system, so we might add weight in winter and take it off in summer. How much weight's on there? 224.8 pounds. The second part is the transmitting mechanism. The transmitting mechanism consists of a series of cogged wheels working on one another. It's also called the time train. The larger brass wheels always do the driving. The smaller steel wheels are called pinions. Each axle has a rigidly fastened wheel and a smaller pinion. All the axles are held together by the frame plates of the clock. Each wheel drives the next pinion. From the great wheel of the driving mechanism to the escape wheel of the controlling mechanism. Each axle turns faster than its predecessor with less power. So the least amount of power up here, the most power down here. Just looking at force, it starts with 1,000 newtons of force and ends up at the anchor escapement at uh, 2.3 newtons. So going from 224 pounds on uh, the drum to 48 pounds to drive the hands of the clock to just half a pound on the anchor escapement. The third part is called the controlling mechanism. The controlling mechanism is sometimes called the regulating mechanism. It allows the clock to keep time. The last wheel on the time train drives the pinion on the escape wheel axle. The escape wheel has long pointed teeth inclined at an angle. The escape wheel is only free to turn as the pendulum swings and the anchor horn releases one tooth. There's an anchor horn on either side and they alternate releasing one tooth. It's the action of the escape wheel and the anchor which causes the ticking of the clock. The pendulum length dictates the rate at which the clock runs. A pendulum with a length of 39.1 inches gives you uh, one second. To keep the pendulum swinging, a clutch rod gives the pendulum a kick on each swing. As oil th thickens, dust collects, and friction changes, the power supplied to the pendulum can drop the swing angle from four degrees to three degrees resulting in an 11 second gain per day. 
Also, changes in temperature can change the length of the pendulum and the time of the swing, resulting in gains of time in winter and a loss of time in summer. The fourth and last part is the indicating mechanism. The indicating mechanism turns the minute hand and hour hands on the clock dials. The axle in the time train that turns once per hour connects to a universal joint that sets in motion four rods leading to each of the four clock dials. These rods connect to a series of cogs to move the hour hand 12 times slower than the minute hand. Here's how I reset the clock. I pull this pin out and then I manually move the rod to change the minute hand on all four clock dials. Just go ahead and turn this a little bit. There. Just a couple minutes. And the pin goes back in and I'm done. So there you have it. An introduction to the four parts of a working E. Howard & Company clock tower clock. for his wonderful 1923 book, Time and Timekeepers. Willis was the Field Memorial Professor of Astronomy at Williams College, and his old office is about 100 yards from this very clock. Also, Cecil Harvey, who at 93 showed me the ropes with this clock and passed the baton to me to tend to it. Anything I managed to get right in this video is to their credit. Anything I mess up is entirely my fault. <laughs>